Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our AV8B and we're looking at the DMT, the Dual Mode Tracker. This is the primary default sensor for sensors for the AV8B that allows us to search and locate targets and then pass that geographic information over to our weapons so that we can deploy our weapons on that target or that point. It is a sensor in the front of the aircraft. <laughs> It's effectively two sensors. One is a TV, uh, essentially a glorified TV camera, which has zoom and it can swivel to different angles. And there's also a laser spot tracker. This is something that can spot third party buddy laser lasers and track their targets. So both of these sensors are different ways of locating a target point for us. And then we, we can act on that target point with our weapons. Now I should say at this point that the DMT is superseded by the lightning teapot. If you equip the lightning teapot then it basically does what the DMT does but better in just about every way. But if we don't have the lightning pod then the DMT is going to be our primary sensor. So we'll show some basic uh, use of the DMT sensor. It's built into the plane so we don't need to equip anything. It's like I said the default. We'll just use some basic IR Mavericks. While that's arming up, let's have a look at today's controls. We'll be firing the missiles with bomb pickle. We'll be caging and uncaging with that. We'll be slewing our TDC with up, down, left and right. We'll be getting a lock with the TDC action. We'll be cancelling a lock with AG target undesignate. And selecting our RIRMV with sensor select forward and selecting our actual DMT with sensor select aft. Now there are two ways of activating or using the DMT. The first way is through the menu and we can click on DMT here or we can press sensor select down on our stick uh, and there are two modes we can use. One mode is LST, our laser spot track and the second is our TV. We'll look at the TV first and go and engage a target and then we'll use the laser spot track to engage a target through that method. First of all we've got some options on the TV screen. We've got code so if we wanted to set our laser code if we were going to be um, dealing with laser guided weapons we would unbox, rebox, type in our code and then enter. Uh, I should note this say at this point you can't set it on the ground you have to set it in the air. Uh, you can change the field of view wide and narrow. Now I can't actually see anything because it's pointing at the sky at the moment but just uh, bear that in mind for now. Night, if it's night time you can temporarily essentially turn this to scre screen off with night and then put it back on. Then this, the fluoro, actually is the filter I believe. This will change between whether you want to see in daylight, bright conditions or dark conditions. Uh, this is a TV obviously so it does not work at night. It does need light but we can configure for how much light there. Uh, that's back to menu. Pause INS, I believe that's inertial navigation system, so I believe that is a way of targeting a point by giving the system uh, like easting and northing and elevation. Uh, it's not implemented at this time, so I can't actually go and use it. ECM puts us back to the EW electronic warfare page. Now the next thing we'll do is take off and actually use this system here to find a target. Okay, we're airborne now. The first thing to say is that the camera initially, until until I told otherwise, is slewed to the path marker here. So it's looking just on the horizon there. So what I need to do is maneuver my aircraft so that this path marker is roughly near or on top of the hostiles. Then I'm going to click TDC action and that will lock the TV in that position. At that point I can then use my TDC slew left, right, up and down to move it about to find a target more accurately. So let's go and do that. You can see just out there we've got a row of tanks or armoured vehicles we can use. We will now move our path vector over those vehicles and when we think we're on them we will press TDC action there and you can see we've left our target mark point there and wherever we move now the camera is now essentially the TV is now facing that direction and you can see we've got it here now we can use our TDC slew keys to move that around to get more accuracy you can see we can move like that so we can select a target now we can't actually lock onto a target instead we're just essentially selecting the um, terrain that's near that target so the best thing to do is when you're aiming at a target like this aim for the base of the target rather than the top of it because if you target the top of it you're actually targeting the bit of land a bit of terrain behind them 
Okay, the next thing to say is that there are slew limits to this camera. It can only slew so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to purposefully now go over the target and, and show that the camera, once it's got to its maximum amount of slew deviation, it will then cut off. But you haven't actually lost the terrain lock at that point. It still saved it in memory. So when we then turn around and come back and point towards the target again, the camera will cut in again automatically from where we left off. So let's do that. So we've reached the slew limit there. So next we need to, and it's cut off obviously, so next we're going to turn around and show that the camera comes back once we've turned around and uh, got in a position where the camera can focus on that target again. And now we're back within slew limits, you can see that the TV is back, they're behind that hill obviously, but they are there. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to get some range, we're going to head out to sea, so we've got a bit of a run, we're going to come back and we're going to employ an IR Maverick onto this target that we've got selected here. So, okay, we've got a few miles distance, so we're going to turn back in. Now the next thing to point out is that we're copy we are currently off of slew limits of the camera, so we can't display. There is an arrow in the HUD over the path marker that points to the direction of the target to get back within slew limits. So it's telling us to turn right. We have our TV back and our target is there. So next what we're going to do is going to pass this targeted information over to our Maverick. So we're going to get everything ready. Master arm on, air to ground on. We're going to go to the stores, select that. We're going to uncage. We're now uncaged. And so this is what the Ma this is what the DMT sees. This is what the Maverick actually sees. And you can see that it's automatically slewed to the same position as we've got here for the DMT. However, that said, it hasn't actually locked on a target. It's just pointing the same direction. So the next thing we have to do is lo actually lock onto a target and it will lock onto the nearest target that it can find to that current position, basically. So I'm pause. So to select forward for IRMV. Then uh, TDC action will give us the lock. And you can see it's given us the lock because the crosshair basically got smaller around the target. That's how we, we know that we've uh, got the target locked other and everything else is just the same as a normal uh, maverick fire so we've got a distance here and we're just going to wait until we are in range and we've got our in range queue give it a few more seconds and let's rifle that out fingers crossed that hits our target oh <laughs> it's got you interestingly it hit the guy next to him so i think um from when I had the slew information here, when I pressed the TDC to press, it, it locked the guy in front of him, I think, because they were so tightly clustered together. But you get the idea. Right, so that's that. Next, we're going to show using the laser spot track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to target undeg undesignate button, as we saw earlier, to unlock the target. Next, or unlock the um, the DMT, so it's now slewed back to path marker again. Next, we're going to press sensor select down again, and we are now on our LST screen. So now I'm going to go and set up a buddy laser, and then I'll report back. Welcome back. So we're in multiplayer now, and we've got Stahl to come and laser us. Say hello, Stahl. Hello. Stahl, please confirm which laser code you're going to be lasing on. 688. Roger. Now, I'm actually already on 1688, but I'm just going to show how to change it, just in case. So we've read the LST screen. We're going to untick code. We're going to retick code. We're going to type in 1688 and enter. And we can now confirm that if I click code here, 1688 comes up. On the LST screen, you can see a cross moving left to right. This is our laser spot tracker sensor moving left to right, looking for Stahl's laser. So when I position that roughly over the target, it fires, it aims in front of us and is scanning left to right like that and it detects uh, Stahl's laser when he's firing it, it will lock our DMT onto a terrain point and then it will be a, very similar to having the lock on the TV mode. Now one thing I forgot to say I think on the TV mode, which also applies to the laser, is that we can, um, un if we are not happy with the terrain lock for some reason, we can deselect that lock and recommit that sensor back to our path marker here. We click the AG undesignate button as we showed earlier to do that. Sometimes it can be a little awkward and you'll have to click it a whole bunch of times for it to work. It's just how it is. Right, I'm going to head in now and I'm going to pick up Stahl's laser when I tell him to fire it and I'm going to employ a weapon as well. Okay, Stahl, can you please turn on the laser? Laser on. 
Right, so we're going to head towards now so that our cone of view of the LS laser spot track. Now, we're probably going to get a bit closer. Um, lots of things can get in the way of this laser. Any terrain, uh, Stahl's wing, um, a building, a little undulation in the terrain. So we're going to get it a little bit closer. Confirm that you're firing the laser, Stahl. Things are still on. Heading in. I think I've got the right area. Yeah, we got it. Right. It is, I had to get in range, basically. So we're within seven miles. We've got the target locked there. So that came specifically from Stahl's laser. Now, Stahl could actually turn his laser off at this point, and I would have this uh, in memory locked, but we're not going to just for this. Now we're going to do the same as last time. We're going to employ our Maverick on that position. We're going to uncage. We're going to select, select forward for IRMV. We're going to convert it into a lock with the TDC to press. We've locked on that dude there. We're now just going to wait until we're in range. Interestingly, on the HUD, it doesn't look like it's uh, actually tracking a target, but on here it does. So let's just give it a go. In range. Cap rifle. Fingers crossed we hit our target. It has been known to be a bit buggy, this LST, so we'll just see how it goes. Hey, got him. Right, so that's that. So we've shown how to use the dual mode tracker in TV mode and in laser spot track with a buddy laser on the go and how to transition that terrain lock over to our weapons and to employ our weapons. It didn't have to be a Maverick, we could have used bombs or whatever, you know, but uh, Mavericks were just easier. Okay, I hope that helps and I'll see you later.